In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. My friends, as we gather to celebrate this Eucharist, together let us pause in the presence of the Lord as we call to mind God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love, in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people participating in the mystery of Christ may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Persia in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue official sent word to them, my brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand and said, fellow children of Israel and you others who are God fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil, I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, 
the rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you, if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen. But so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I'm right in the middle of uh, a confirmation season, if you will. My assistant told me I'm going to be in 40 different places in the next eight weeks or so, just doing the sacrament of confirmation. And it made me think about today's uh, readings in a way, because when I, when I thought about it, we really, we really have uh, preparation for all of our sacraments, except for the sacrament of the sick. There's a preparation that everybody does for, to receive all the sacraments. And, and in a certain way, it make, can make us think that what we are doing as we prepare to receive our sacraments is just passing along information from one generation to the next. But information alone is not at the core of our faith. And when I go around to do those confirmations, I try to to get our young people to understand that, yes, we, we have to understand our story. We have to understand the background for which our story comes out of. So it's necessary to pass along information about the faith. But truly, the heart of our faith comes from how it inspires us. It comes from inspiration. And I tell them that I can pass along information, but inspiration's a little bit harder because inspiration comes from down deep inside. And so I see that in both of our scripture readings today. We, in our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles today, where we really have Paul, he's on, St. Paul is on his first missionary journey. We know that he had three during his lifetime. But what's really deceptive about that is that it was only last, I think it was last Thursday when we read his conversion story. That's given to us three times in the Acts of the Apostles. How, how Paul was, uh, uh, had that dramatic encounter with the risen Lord Jesus that changed his life. And we read that story last Thursday, and today we start reading that, that Paul starts his missionary journeys, as if he had that conversion experience, and then three days later he's already traveling. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is that there's 12 years of a gap in there. <laughs> 12 years that he spent, yes, preaching a little bit, but coming to understand more deeply what had taken place. And so in his first missionary speech, which we have today, he, he, he begins to tie together. Remember that Paul was a Pharisee at one time, so he knew the Hebrew faith inside and out. And he begins to tie his Hebrew faith and tries to direct everyone's energy, tying together the complete story of how God called the Hebrew people and points them towards the life of Jesus Christ. That the real power of our faith, 
comes in our encounter with the person of Jesus. And Paul understood that firsthand. And now he's trying to, and trying to share the source of his inspiration with others as he made that address. Jesus himself is revealing to us that he calls us not just to, to know information about him, but to bring him to other people. And so we're brought back to the Last Supper. He reveals our inspiration, his inspiration to touch our life as a way of life. That, that he's not trying to pass along to us simply philosophies or creeds, but a way of life. And so we go back to the Last Supper, right after Jesus had washed the feet of his disciples. And he reminds them that no messenger is greater than the one who sends him. And so I, that's a reminder certainly to me and to the rest of us that at the end of the day, we never replace God. We're simply his vessels. We are simply messengers of the good news because if we're inspired by Jesus' words and his life, all we are called to do is to share that inspiration uh, with others. And Jesus says, if we understand this, then we are simply going to do it. We're going to serve others. And so he says to his apostles, if you have understand what I have done by the washing of your feet, then simply what you are asked to do is go and do others. The great preacher Fulton Sheen once said, you must remember to love, you must remember to love people and use things rather than to love people things and use people. I'd like to expand that to say that in our sacramental life that all of our sacraments are meant to inspire an active way of living out our faith. They're not simply to be used for ourselves or to be used as measures to say, well, you know how, how sometimes we can measure, well, I go to Mass and I, go, I attend the sacraments and I get the grace of the sacraments and use it as a way to compare ourselves to others. No, the sacraments are meant to inspire living in love as Christ has taught us. So we have begun this day and we have gathered to open our ears and hearts to the word of the Lord today and to draw close to the risen Jesus sacramentally in the Eucharist. My friends, let us go from here to bring the hope and the healing and the mercy of Jesus to others, not simply because we know him in our brains, but because we know him in our hearts. And he inspires our life to share the joy and the beauty of life with him, with others. May we use this day that the Lord has given us to share that joy and that hope with others. Amen. Trusting that God is the author of all our stories, we place our needs and petitions into his loving hands. For the people of God, may we be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in our faith and witness to the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. For those in positions of earthly power, may the Lord grant them charity and prudence in their efforts to bend the arc of history toward justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For those struggling with difficult decisions and the burdens of circumstances in their life, may God give them the grace and strength to endure and overcome. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are gathered here, may Christ and the Eucharist to con continue to transform us for his work in the world. And we remember the sick, especially those of our parish, Tiffany Lochnane, Rita Wilkinson, Rupert So, and Bill Hamilton. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, May they rejoice in the presence of God for all of eternity. We especially remember Dottie Volante, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pause now, adding our own private needs and intentions in silence.
we pray to the Lord. God, you continue to draw us more deeply into your love. And so we offer these prayers and ask that you answer them according to our need. For we make them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of old creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of old creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints, Saint Gabriel, Saint Catherine of Siena, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together now, let us pray with faith, hope, and confidence, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace to all. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Have a nice day, everyone.